Welcome, all of you. The Finnish Vikings. So, continuing my series on the Vikings from different countries. Okay, technically, we can't call the Finns Vikings. You all know by now that the Vikings referred to a profession, actually. The Vikings were actually just the small percentage of fighting age men living in Scandinavia who went out raiding any time from about the year 793 to 1066. That's who are referred to as Vikings, if we use the correct term. So we can't really include the Finns in that. But either way, if there is one country outside of Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, that was most connected to Viking society, it was the Finns, okay? For many reasons involving trade, relationships, and especially the spirituality, but also some evidence that the Finns did actually take part and join up with their Scandinavian cousins in raiding, and maybe we can actually refer to them as Vikings. So buckle up while I tell you about my favorite group of people from the late Viking Age. Now before you guys get all upset, let me tell you why the Finns are my favorite of the late Viking Age. My favorite people in the north of Europe changes over time. In the early Viking Age, the Danes were my favorite. They were the best Vikings. But before the Viking Age, the Swedes were number one. They were the most badass. In the mid-Viking Age, getting into the late Viking Age, it was definitely the Norwegians, not even debatable. But, at the very end of the Viking Age, and post-Viking Age, definitely my favorite group of people were definitely the Finns. And even today, honestly, the Finns are my favorite people in the north of Europe. Even being Norwegian, don't get butthurt anyone, I'll tell you all why in a minute. But first, let's look at the word Finland, uh, because the Finns of the Viking Age were very, very different to the Finland of today. Finland, the country today, has only actually been independent for about a hundred years. It was a part of Russia before that, and it was a part of Sweden way before that for a very long time. So yeah, as far as a country or territory, Finland has kind of been the same for a long time, but culturally, linguistically, and spiritually, the land of the Finns was much larger back then. Back in the Viking Age, all of these people living in these areas were referred to as Finns. Most of Finland, large parts of northern Norway and Sweden, the Baltic states even, and even getting into modern-day Russia, which back in the Viking Age, that area was called Bjarmland. And these were the Bjarmar tribe. Um, there were also tribes called the Kvanir and the Kyrjalar. Uh, we also have some very old records referring to some of them as, you know, Sami or Laplanders, which is what we call them today, at least the ones living in north of Scandinavia. Um, I'm sure there were way uh, more, many small tribes back then, but just realize that the Norse, <laughs> the Vikings back then, considered all these people Finns. They just referred to them all as Finns. So basically... Anyone in the north uh, of that time in the Viking Age who wasn't culturally Norse or Germanic, they were referred to as Finns. So the Finns were very much a part of Scandinavia in the Viking Age, of course, but they actually come from a completely different background than the Norse did, for example. The Scandinavians of the time were a Germanic people, speaking a Germanic language, of course, Old Norse, and following the Germanic branch of that um, religion. The Finns, completely different and unrelated language family, we call these the Uralic language, which includes all these branches that you see here, you know, different languages today like Sami, Finnish, and even Hungarian, and the northern tribal Russian languages even, they're all in the same family, completely unrelated to the Indo-European Germanic language family. Uh, and actually, it's quite mysterious where it all originates, and we're not 100% sure on where that comes from, or even where these ancient peoples came from. Also, the religion of the Finns back then is not related to the Norse pagan religion or any other Indo-European one. The native religion of the Finns is actually closer to the type of shamanism that you might find in Siberia than their neighbors following the old Norse religion. Although, of course, with the Norse there was a ton of similarities too, and that I have a lot of cool stories about that I'm going to tell you. But finally, 
to speak about the genetics. This is a very difficult question, and I don't like speaking about these types of things because people get so pissy about it. And it really, I don't think it matters at the end of the day. Look in the mirror, look into yourself and your ancestry, and that will tell you more about your genetics than any test can. But the Finns today are definitely mixed. There's a lot of Scandinavian, Germanic DNA in there in Finland. Lots of light features looking pretty much identical to their neighbors in Norway or Sweden. But there are also people with a lot of darker features that look like the typical Sami or the North Russian tribal people. And a lot of people are just mixed in Finland. That is today. Um, some will be very Germanic, some will be very Uralic in their DNA. But remember, this is actually more than a thousand years of mixing with each other. So how did they look in the Viking Age? It's hard to say, we have some descriptions of it, but if you ask me, I think they probably had a lot more of that Uralic DNA a thousand years ago um, than they do today, and they would have looked quite different to the Norwegians and the Swedes of the time. Whereas today, the people of Finland actually look more Swedish than most Swedes do today. But uh, yeah, like I said, you guys can look up the genetic research yourself. I'm not going to talk about it, and it's going to get me in trouble anyway. So let's get back to the sources and the Viking Age story. If I could sum up the Finns and the Viking Age with one word, it would be... Magic. Now you guys know why the Finns are actually my favorite people in the Viking Age and it's because of that. It's because of their magic, their connection to the nature, their connection to the spiritual world, and the Norse at the time had very much started to lose this. Uh, so I'll get into the sources in a minute uh, from the Viking Age, but let's talk quickly about the Finns before the Viking Age, uh, as I like to call the Germanic tribal era, really this we call this antiquity or the migration period, whatever. It's about seven, eight hundred years before the Viking Age when all these Germanic tribes in these areas here were all whooping some Roman ass. And <laughs> now the best source on the Germanic tribes is Germania, written by the Roman historian Tacitus in the first century. And in here he speaks about many tribes. One of the ones that really stands out is the Feni, and we think that is what the early Finns were called, although the exact location that they lived in was unclear. Uh, this Roman historian lists them as a tribe among the Germanic peoples, which of course they are not Germanic, as I already spoke about, but Tacitus or any other Roman from the time would not have known the difference because the Feni were so far away from where the Romans were, and he could only rely really on second or third hand accounts. Uh, but this is what he wrote about the Feni. Basically that they were beastly savages who ate meats and flesh and wild herbs and wore animal skins as clothes and sleeping on the ground and they were completely happy with that and they did not need any more, very much like still the hunter-gatherer people. And this has led scholars to think that the word Feni might actually come from the Proto-Germanic word Fantheon, uh, denoting like wanderers or hunting folk, what it could mean. So in the first century there, remember, the Finns were seemingly quite a bit far behind other Germanic peoples in their evolution, and very far behind the Romans, but you know what? That's why I love them the most, because I don't see it as an evolution at all, I see it as a decaying society when something turns into a large civilization. The Finns were the ones living like beasts with nature, just like the Germanic tribes were maybe doing a few hundred years ago, and the Romans or Greeks were doing many, many hundreds of years ago. Uh, but that is our natural way of human life and I like that a lot, just in case you wanted to know. And also you will see this in some of the other sources that I go over too. The Finns tend to be always a few hundred years behind in technology and development from the rest of Europe, but that's what makes them so great. Another source from around this time um, is uh, Ptolemy, who produced his uh, Geographia, and he lists the Finnoi as living in northern Scandinavia and also in the East Baltic area. So he could be referring to the Baltic countries or Finland here, of course. Uh, the Finns are mentioned also a few hundred years later in Jordanus's work, Getica. He lists three types of Finn one called the Skrenfenae, the Finnaithae, 
and the mitimisi finny. Um, and those basically mean the skiing fins, the ones that ski. The fins living in Finveden, which is in southern Sweden. And the mitimisi fins, meaning the uh, softest fins. We don't know all of these three, who these people were, of these tribes, or where they come from. I think Scandinavians today uh, know, but I'm not going to say. <laughs> How about any of you Finnish people? Which ones out of you would you say are the softest ones? Which ones are the best skiers? You can all argue amongst each other. I don't want to get into that. Anyway, that's about it for the uh, antiquity and migration period. Uh, the earliest records of the Finns, uh, so you have a good idea. Now let's get on to the Viking Age. Now, where do we start with this? I'm going to go over some of the most famous sources and coolest stories mentioning the Finns, but there are hundreds of mentions of the Finns. All you have to do is read any Viking saga, and within a few minutes you will see some mention of the Finns. Now the relationship was at first quite complicated. Sometimes us Norsemen just raided the Finns. Sorry to say it, guys, but you were the top target for the raids. Uh, but also, they had very positive relationships, too. The Finns were the biggest trading partners of the Norse. Uh, they had things like animal skins and other very valuable goods to trade. But they were also allies of the Norse, too. They definitely teamed up and fought together sometimes, especially when Christianity came in and the Norse and Finn pagans stood together and fought for their religious beliefs. So let's get on to the first subject, the raids. Sorry Finns, the bad news is you were usually the first target for a raid from us Norsemen. You were close by, your villages were small, small tribes, you were easy targets, you know, coming from a physical standpoint, and you had less advanced weapons, armor, battle tactics, and even shorter and smaller people. That's no secret, don't feel bad, all of Europe was shorter and smaller and weaker than the Vikings. But in a way, the Finns were the most feared uh, raiding target too. Not necessarily because of their battle abilities, but because of their magic. It was an easy raid physically, but the Finns, if they caught you and they used some magic, you were in deep, deep shit. And in Inglinga Saga, there was a large series of raids on the Finns by the Swedish king Agne. It's disputed whether the Old Norse concept of back then of Finland referred to the present country of Finland, or, or actually just the Finn people, could be northern Norway or northern Sweden. Um, it could have been the land of the Sami, we're not sure. But another source is Noilna uh, Gestsfattir, and that tells of the Kvens, which were a Finnish tribe, and they actually were raiding in Sweden in the mid-700s. And in the late 9th century, uh, Swedish king Erik Anundsen was said to have conquered all of Finland um, on after his raids with several other eastern countries. And this is regarded as a bit of an unreliable source. Um, guys, you can't conquer all of Finland. This is not possible, especially back then, because so many tribes were way too remote and way too strong, just like the Germanic tribes were against Rome a few hundred years before. Um, and this is really how Finland has remained badasses for more than 2,000 years now, really. Just kind of remote and tribal and hard to get to. You can conquer maybe certain towns and certain regions, but you can't conquer the whole country. One very cool story is a raid of a temple of the Bjalmians uh, that the Norwegian king Olav the Saint uh, conducted. And in that description, it mentions that the god of the temple was called Jomali and that the Bjalmians uh, had their valuables and mixed it with earth in the burial mounds. And it's one of the few records of temples we actually have in the Norse sources. Uh, king Olav uh, successfully completed the raid, but the local inhabitants attacked them with bows and arrows. Olav and his crew fled, but the Finns actually used magic to whip up a storm and almost sunk King Olav's ship. And we have quite a few similar tales to this of Finns using magic to fight off a raid. 
a couple more sources on the raids that are interesting. We have a couple of rune stones in Sweden. Uh, the rune stone GS13 uh, describes the death of a Viking named Egil on a raid uh, to Finland led by Freyrgeir um, sometime in the early uh, 1000s. Runestone U582 describes a Viking named Utrig. Uh, he was killed in Finland, and according to historian Uno Salto, the raid was done between 1030 and 1050. So those are just a few records we have of the raids on the Finns, uh, but there are a lot more. But time to get on to my favorite part, the magic. This too, there are dozens and dozens of mentions of the Finns being good with magic. As a matter of fact, almost every example of magic that you can read about in the Viking sagas, it was practiced by some Finn. And this lasted long into history too, even from folk tales that we have from as recent as one or two hundred years ago, it was always the Finns who were mentioned to be good with magic. They even had a word for magic um, in the Old Norse, and it was basically called Finnfurd, which meant take a trip to the Finns on like a, a spiritual journey looking for divination or spiritual help or prophecy or something uh, consulting the Finns. There was even a law in Norway that forbids Finnfur, that you were not allowed to go to the Finns on a trip and consult with them about spiritual help. So that's just uh, the main kind of intro to it, this idea of Finnfurd, but there are dozens of more sources, I can't go into them all, but I'll share my two favorite stories. In Halfdan the Black Saga, the Norwegian king Halfdan was having a Yule feast. A Finn came who was supposed to be good with magic, he was said to be a wizard, and all the food was gone. And everyone thought that this Finn came in and he ate all the food or used magic to uh, take away all the food. So the uh, Norwegians took him prisoner and tortured him. And it was actually Halfdan's son, Harald Fairhair, as a young boy actually, who made friends with this Finn and begged his father to let him go. Eventually, this young Hadeld helped the Finn escape, and the Finn thanked Hadeld and used magic to kill his father, King Halfdan, by making him fall through the ice. And that is actually when Hadeld Fairhair first became king when his father died and he was just a teenager. Another story, as told in Harald Fairhair's saga, uh, Harald Fairhair's son, Erik, when he was just a boy, he came across a woman in Finnmark. She was Norse, she was a, a Norwegian, and she had been sent to the land of the Finns to learn magic from two Finn men who were said to be the best magic practitioners in all of Finnmark. It was the, the north of Norway back then, but they referred to them as the Finns. That's still called uh, Finnmark today. And these two Finns were said to never miss a shot with an arrow or spear, and they could actually kill someone with their gaze. But Gunhild, this woman who went there to learn, she was so beautiful that the Finns kept her prisoner and didn't let her leave, and Eric Bloodaxe and his men helped her kill the two Finns um, and helped her escape. So um, there'll be a couple more stories about Finnish magic um, I'm going to speak about in just a minute, but those are basically my two favorites. But on to the next subject. We can't speak about Finland without speaking about women and marriage. Finn women, or Finkuna, uh, as they were called, were very, very attractive for marriages uh, for the Norse. Many, many Viking kings took Finnish wives because they were the most beautiful, and also they were good with magic. We have many stories of this. I must say, I can sympathize. I've got a thing for Finnish girls. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend's gonna be pissed, I know, blah 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 blah. I say that in every video. No, I don't. I only said that in the last video, that I kind of have a thing for Dutch girls too, but I've only said that twice, because there's only two countries in the world where I have a thing for the girls there, and it's Dutch girls and it's Finnish girls. Why? Well, they are the only hot ones in the world that can actually take a joke and have a sense of humor. There are beautiful girls all throughout the world, okay? And there are girls who can take a joke throughout the world, especially in Scandinavia. Plenty of beautiful girls, uh, but they are uh, pretty boring, okay? And they definitely can't take a joke. They get offended at every little thing. 
Finnish and Dutch girls. Not only will they laugh at my offensive jokes, but they'll come back to me and say something even more offensive with that dark humor. And that's wife material, okay? And I think the Vikings a thousand years ago kind of saw this too and they had this same attraction and they were bored of the Norse women at home. So one great story coming from a couple hundred years before the Viking Age as told in Ynglinga Saga. Swedish king Ungni and his men went on a series of raids in Finland. The Finns had had enough of it and a great Finnish chieftain named Fjosti gathered all the Finns together to stand up against the Swedes. The Swedes won the battle and killed the chieftain Fjosti, and the king Ungni took Fjosti's daughter named Skjelv to be his wife because she was the most beautiful woman in the north. She said, okay, but only if you hold a great funeral feast for my father. So Ungni did that. He held a feast for the killed uh, Finnish chieftain, but then his daughter Skjelv sneakily strangled Agni to death with a necklace during the night. Another story from quite a bit before the Viking Age. A Swedish king, von Lundi, stayed with a Finnish chieftain over the winter. His name was Sna the Old, and King von Lundi fell in love with Sna's most beautiful daughter named Driva, and they got married. Long story short, King von Nandi uh, didn't pay enough attention to her and he left and he didn't return to Finland to see her for many years. And after that, his Finnish wife used magic to call him home. But when he still didn't come home, she sent a Mare, or this uh, hag riding spirit, to basically kill him in his sleep. This serves as a valuable lesson about Finnish women. If you find the right one, they are the most beautiful, fun, friendly, and loyal long-term partners if you stay on their good side. Like, hey, a lot of you guys have messaged asking, oh, what kind of girls do I like? What's, what's your girlfriend like? Is she into magic? You know, if I'm that into magic, does she, my girl have to be a vulva or a magic practitioner? Hell no. <laughs> I cheat, okay? <laughs> I cheat. See, if you piss off a regular girl, Nothing happens. She ain't got no hands. Maybe she will get her friend to send you a couple mean messages. No big deal. But if you piss off a girl who knows magic, she can do some very unpleasant things. And I have learned my lesson, especially with Finnish girls, even if they're not that spiritual or into magic. They have some energy about them. And uh, I pretty much have cheated on all of them that I've been with and <laughs> they have made some way to make me pay so that's just a warning for any of you who want to dabble in that don't mess with Finnish women another story my favorite one uh, involving Heidelb fair hair he had many many wives and about 30 children something I aspire to just in case you didn't know but his favorite wife was a Finn called Snafridir uh, and King Harald was at a Yule feast one day held by the uh, Finnish chieftain named Svasi and he introduced him to his daughter Snafridir. The king um, had come over with lust as the story said and wanted to bed Snafridir but her father Svasi would not allow his daughter to just become a concubine for the king so he said you have to marry her. And Harald agreed to take his, probably his 12th wife, uh, so he could just bang her pretty much. He agreed to marry her. But it ended up with Harald loving this woman more than any other. So Harald spent all of his time with this Finnish woman, Snafridir, and he actually neglected his kingdom. And during the three-year-long marriage, she gave birth to four of his children, which one of them was pretty famous, uh, Halfdan here. Uh, but one day, Snafridir suddenly died and Harald uh, basically got mad with grief and sadness and he basically kept her body for many months, I think even many years, because the body never turned into a corpse and rotted for a long time because she was so magical. Eventually Harald's servants um, convinced Harald to let them change her clothes and move the body, but when this happened, uh, they changed her clothes and lifted her body. The body turned blue and started to smell awful and toads and snakes and lizards 
crawled out of her body, and this made Harald in disgust. He loved her so much, and he thought he was she was so magical. And for the rest of his life after that, he hated uh, magic practitioners. He even had four of his sons that Snafrid gave birth to. He sent them all away because he didn't want anyone practicing magic around, and he even sent his most loyal and beloved son, Eric Bloodaxe, to murder uh, Harald's other son by Snafri, and that was Jungwald, because he was uh, starting to take after his mother and be a very good magic practitioner. Crazy story, is it true? Who knows, but that is my favorite one uh, involving the Finns, basically. So you can see how complicated the Norse and Finn relations were. Uh, the Finns honestly were not treated that well by the Norse most of the time. They were the number one raiding target, and other than that, the Vikings just wanted to take your most beautiful women and as wives, and, you know, go to you for help whenever we needed some spiritual guidance. Doesn't sound that nice from most of the stories we hear, um, but there were some very friendly relations with the Finns too, through trade and other relationships. Here are a couple of friendly stories. Uh, like I mentioned just a couple minutes ago in Harald Fairhair Saga, uh, the Norwegian noblewoman Gunhild was actually sent to the two magical Finns, remember, by her father Osur to learn magic. And it seemed actually like this was a uh, pretty common practice, going to learn magic from the Finns, and they were respected teachers. So if you wanted your child in Scandinavia to learn magic, you'd send them over to the Finns. In another saga, the one of Olav the Saint, the legendary Tore Hund, who was a Norwegian chieftain, he basically controlled the Norwegian trade with the Finns. Uh, the main uh, goods that the Finns provided was different types of animal furs, and Tude actually had a great relationship with the Finns because of this. Although he, he, there's one story of Turehund raiding the Finns in Bjarmland, in Russia area, but he was friendly with the Finns uh, in the north of Norway. Even so much that they made him and his men some magical reindeer hides that protected them from any sharp weapon in battle, so they could not even be killed. This is one of the main reasons that the pagans won at the Battle of Stiklestad against Olav the Saints, by the way. Um, may I also remind you that I carry both Finnish and Norwegian reindeer furs in my shop, if you like those. We have another famous story in the saga of uh, Olav Tryggvason. The horrible King Olav was torturing people who didn't want to convert to Christianity. Eivind, a Norse chieftain, was being killed by a bowl of uh, burning embers basically put on his stomach because he refused to convert to Christianity. And in his last dying breath he said, I cannot receive baptism because I am spirit quickened in a man's body by the wizardry of the Finns. For my father and mother had no child before that was done. Uh, so that's at least the English translation. What does that exactly mean? I don't know. I'd, I'd have to see the original Old Norse one for that. But it's basically implying that the Finns had a good relationship with Avon's parents. Enough to help them bear a son who would be spiritually protected for life. We even had one source in Gesta Tanurum that mentions the Finnish king Matul and the Bjarms, and they actually supported the Swedes against the Danish king Ragnar in uh, a battle. Uh, Gesta Tanurum is not the most reliable source, um, but the Suomen Kronika dates the event uh, to 818, so it definitely could have happened, the uh, Finns teaming up with the Swedes to fight off Denmark for a, a certain period of time. And I'm sure Sure, there was a lot more than this what we find recorded in the sagas. The Finns teaming up with the Norse, especially as Christianity came in, but all good things come to an end. Scandinavia stopped being pagan and they became Christians in the late Viking Age. And that is where I will end the video for here. So I'll leave it at that guys, um, because technically the Viking Age ends in the year 1066. But this is only just the start of the history of the real Finland, okay? After the rest of Scandinavia became Christian around that time, 
uh, the Viking Age technically ended, and Finland after that received an onslaught of raids and crusades, not just from Scandinavia and the Christian, Norwegian, and Swedish kings, but also from Eastern European kingdoms too. They were all trying to Christianize and take over Finland at the same time, and it took them more than 200 years to do so. The Finns fought off every attack and upheld their pagan religion like absolute legends, even though, you know, now, at that point, the whole of Europe had become Christian, and the Finns were the last standing pagans in all of Europe, and every other European rule was trying to force their ways on Finland. Some say the Finns were never truly Christianized, but that is a long and very great story for another day. So let me know if you guys like this video, and I'll continue that history because there's a lot more of it in the next couple hundred years after uh, the Viking Age ended about the Finns. But that's all for today. We see us next time.